Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be looking at running backs and wide receivers here. I do want to recap a couple of running backs we've been talking about over the past few weeks, Travis Etienne and Jameer Gibbs. First off with Etienne, this is a running back that, yes, I know, is not popping out the charts when it comes to his overall fantasy football production. Overwhelmingly, I think this is due to the Jacksonville Jaguars' poor offensive performance that we've had over the past three weeks. Yeah, they went 23-7 to this past week, but ultimately, that was off the big six. I mean, still this offense struggled to move the ball down the field. If you look at the underlying usage with Travis Etienne, TN. The man did have 56 snaps out of 66 potential snaps in this backfield. I mean, he still had three targets. He still had 20 carries. So the usage is still there with ETN. Fundamentally, the only thing that we need to see to change will be the Jacksonville Jaguars offensive production. This next week may be a tough matchup going up against Buffalo. So maybe you're not expecting them to turn the ship around immediately. But nonetheless, still excited to go through and start Travis ETN going forward. And if you can still get ETN at a pretty good discount, I think we would be interested. But y'all know Jameer Gibbs had also been a running back that we were saying for the long-term outlook, given a PPR format, we want to be going and seeing what his price is, knowing that with Gibbs, he's going to continue to expand his role as the season goes on. David Montgomery last week crushed Jameer Gibbs. So I want to reiterate, with Gibbs, non-PBR format, you don't want him at all. David Montgomery is the goal line back. If you're playing in a half PBR format, it's probably kind of a hold situation. Stay away if you don't already have him. But I'm actually going to stand by the Jameer Gibbs buy in a full PPR format. If you are 3-1, and one, if you are 4-0, and oh, if we are looking for the long-term year, I think that Jameer Gibbs will be able to continuously expand his role in Detroit, even if he's not going to give you much in the short term, specifically as a receiving down back. You're not really going to be looking for the short-term production, more so the long-term upside. Now, those are just the recaps. Going into players that I actually think now could be very intriguing buy low candidates at their new prices. Starting off with Aaron Jones, this is going to be a running back that, yes, <sighs> completely flamed out against Detroit. Jordan Love, this entire Green Bay Packers offense, looked very bad. And with Aaron Jones... He only had five carries, two targets. He scored you a whopping 1.4 fantasy points in a non-PBR format. And that gets bumped up to 2.4 points in a full PBR league. If you look at the underlying volume, very frustrating. Where you had A.J. Dillon playing 38 snaps in comparison to Aaron Jones at 20. And we were lied to coming into this game. We were told that Aaron Jones wasn't really going to be on a snap count. We were told that Aaron Jones was going to be fully good to go. However, reports after the game, Matt LaFleur said Aaron Jones was on a snap count in week four. It's going to see a full workload in week five. So it's extremely frustrating to see that Aaron Jones gets injured in week one. He still has a good day, right? He still has multiple touchdowns, still gets the 86 receiving yards. But then you don't have him in weeks two and three. He comes back week four. He completely tanks your week. So I'm assuming the Aaron Jones owner at this point is probably extremely frustrated. And this would be a spot where we could go through and we could look to pick him up on the cheap, specifically in a full BBR format where we are excited about the receiving upside. Now, going over to our next RB, we are going to be looking at Brian Robinson here. With Brian Robinson, over the past few weeks, he hasn't been lighting the world on fire by any means. He was a buy low running back for us coming into the season, actually. And I still actually really like the workload. The fundamental issue that you've had with Brian Robinson is going to be the matchups that we looked at. I mean, if you look at the past two weeks, they went up against the Buffalo Bills, who obviously have a top 5-10 to 10 defense in the NFL. Then they went up against the Philadelphia Eagles, who going into week four had the toughest run defense that any team add in the NFL if you're looking at the fantasy points allowed by running backs going up against Philly. Well, Brian Robinson still came out and against Philly, he did fine, right? A super tough matchup. He only averages 3.2 yards per carry because, come on, it's the Philly defense. But he did have 14 carries. He had the rushing touchdown. He had multiple targets and receptions out of this backfield as well. And if we're going to contrast this with what you've had from Antonio Gibson, still Gibson really not getting involved here. With Antonio Gibson, you've had a total of 13 carries this season. You've had a total of 10 targets out of this backfield. So if you're looking at the receiving usage, Brian Robinson is getting about 40% of the targets in this Washington Commanders offense. But if you're looking at the rushing volume, he's seeing about 80% of the carries. 
So while, yeah, you're not expecting that Brian Robinson turns into an RB1 in fantasy just because Washington, not a good offense, right? Still someone that you're excited about the raw volume, the raw opportunity, and will be a running back too based off that opportunity in much easier matchups going forward, going up against the Bears, going up against the Falcons, and going up against the New York Giants. Now, our next player here in Austin Eckler, I know it's going to be expensive, but I actually have pretty damn good news with the Los Angeles Chargers. Obviously, they are in a bye week this week, but I got everybody on underdog that used promo code FLOCK hooked up with a Justin Herbert special pickup, more than less than half a passing yard coming out of the bye in week six. So please make sure you take advantage of that. And if you're new to underdog, you're actually going to get an extra special pickup for this week. Justin Fields, more than less than half a total yard going up against the Washington Commanders on Thursday. Of course, if you want to drop with us on underdog, or if you want to go check out any of those special pickups, you can find that link in the description or in the comment section. Promo code flock, you're going to get a 100% of positive match up to $500. Plus, you're going to be getting my updated rest of season fantasy football rankings. And I got y'all hooked up with that exclusive Justin Herbert special pickup, more than less than half a total yard for next week. And for this week, if you're new to underdog, you're going to begin that Justin Field special pickup. But with Austin Eckler here, this is a running back that full transparency, I did not really draft at all. I mean, coming into the season, we were looking at Eckler and going, okay, well, this is a running back that you have to take ahead of Bijan Robinson. Fundamentally, I mean, we don't want to be drafting age 28-year-old running backs when the historical data shows that these are going to be guys that are more prone to injury. These are going to be guys that are quicker to go through and fall off. However, if you're going to be looking at what we have with Austin Eckler, now his price has actually come down and his situation maybe is even a little bit better. Now, I don't want to hammer in on this too, too much. Obviously, it's not the biggest deal in the world. But I mean, if you are going to be looking at what we have with no Mike Williams, all of a sudden, I mean, you have just more available targets in this offense for Austin Eckler. So even if you have, say, Quentin Johnston stepping into this offense and Quentin Johnston taking over some targets from what you maybe would have seen with Mike Williams, I think the Eckler production is actually pretty damn safe to see. Because if you go back and look at what we had with Austin Eckler with no Mike Williams last season, Austin Eckler saw 10.5 targets per game with no Mike Williams, and he saw 6.5 targets per game in games that Mike Williams played. So I'm looking at this going, okay, well, the passing volume is probably going to be more in favor of Eckler than it would have been previously. And at the same time, this is a running back that coming out of his bye week should be fully healthy. The Eckler owners, at least from what I've seen in my live streams every single night, are really frustrated. I completely understand why. I mean, Eckler was going out there sending out some cryptic tweets this past week, making it seem like he was going to be playing. Well, I think we can safely say at this point, okay, well, he'll be back after the bye week. And since he took the extra time to get healthy and he had that perfectly timed bye in week five, you should most likely have Eckler through the rest of the season. And I do think that he is a top five to six fantasy football asset rest of year. I mean, if you were looking at an Eckler trade, I know he's going to be very expensive. But if you could go send like Jamar Chase for Austin Eckler right now, I think that may make some sense. Now, going over to a running back that I did not like coming into the season, Rashad White really is turning around for me. And we've had a lot of people in the live chat a little bit worried about Rashad White as of late. I mean, I understand why, right? He's been very inefficient. Rashad White, 3.3 yards per carry. I'm not coming out here and saying Rashad White's some great running back. Remember, I didn't like this guy coming into the season. But what you are looking at with Rashad White is you're looking at an incredibly safe workload, while at the same time, you actually have a better offense than we initially expected. You have Rashad White with 13 targets through the first four games. You have Rashad White with 63 carries. And if you look at the usage in the red zone, Rashad White is the red zone back for this team. This team does have more trips to the red zone than you typically see from other players and what I really like to do and I feel like we can generally get a better discount overall on players that are on by is go through and kind of target those bi-week running backs those bi-week wide receivers right because I mean out of sight out of mind especially if they're coming off a disappointing performance going into the week I know a lot of people are going to be looking at Rashad White and Austin Eckler and it sounds crazy and it is crazy they should not think this but I see it in the live streams every day they're gonna think oh crap I don't have this guy this week I need someone to play right now um who should we sell them for the reality of the situation is every single player in the NFL is still gonna have to go through their bye week even if we have, say, Rashad White, even if we have Austin Eckler going through their bye week right now, if we go through and see, I mean, maybe a trade where we send away, I don't know, like Zach Moss and another player for Rashad White. I mean, Zach Moss is still going to have to go through his bye week later in the season as well. 
Now, going over to what we have with our next player, I want to put a massive asterisk. Brees Hall is not a running back that you should be trading for right this second at any cost. Brees Hall is someone that is down in the dumps. Brees Hall is someone that's left in the gutters. You know, we are screaming to sell this guy earlier in the season, and people were mocking us for it. I think people have finally realized, yes, the New York Jets are going to be one of the worst offenses in the NFL. Brees Hall is in a running back by committee where you shouldn't have expected much volume to go his way at the beginning of the season coming off a torn ACL. But what you have seen with Brees Hall is we have seen him actually submit himself as the receiving down back for this New York Jets offense. This past week, he ran 17 routes in comparison to Michael Carter at eight in comparison to Dalvin Cook at six. If you look at the Dalvin Cook usage, Dalvin Cook is being used less and less and less. I don't think that Brees Hall is someone that we can go through and start this next week. I don't think you want to be planning on starting Brees Hall anytime soon. But if you're thinking just straight long term here and the other owner in your league in Brees Hall has finally realized, yeah, this guy's not going to give me any production anytime soon. Now may be the time to go out there and see what a trade would look like. I mean, if you were going to do so, you probably got to do so this week because they are about to go up against the Denver Broncos. Now, unlike Brees Hall, this is a player I'm fine saying, go be aggressive. Go get him. I know, I mean, the other owner is panicking. Jalen Waddell. With Jalen Waddell, he has done nothing really this season. Jalen Waddell has 210 receiving yards through three weeks. Jalen Waddell has 12 total receptions and zero total touchdowns. This is a team that has effectively ran the ball. This is a team that has had blow up weeks from Tyreek Hill. However, with Jalen Waddell, we have to remember, this is a wide receiver that left week two early with the concussion. It was near the end of the game, but still had a concussion week two. Didn't get to play fully. And if you are looking at his first week back, he did still see five targets. Now, I understand this may seem very frustrating. You may be asking, Mason, Jalen Waddell was so good last season. Jalen Waddell averaged almost 90 receiving yards per game with Tua under center last year. Why is he so much worse? Why is he only seeing five, six targets a game? If we go back to what you had last year with Jalen Waddell as well, how many weeks did we have with five to six targets? You had week one, week three, week four, week five, um, week seven, week eight, week nine, week 10, week 11, week 12. Pretty much every single week, Jalen Waddell was sitting there around six to seven targets. With Waddle, this is a highly athletic wide receiver that lives off of big plays. He is in a great offense where there should be a ton of opportunities for him to provide you massive spike weeks. And while, yes, he may be a little bit inconsistent, if we can go through and if we can buy him coming out of a dip, I think that would make a lot of sense because fundamentally, I don't believe that Jalen Waddle going into year three of his NFL career has gotten worse. Jalen Waddle, if anything, has probably gotten better. This is an elite level offense. This is just natural wide receiver volatility. We've seen him play two and a half weeks. I'm not worried about Jalen Waddle at all going forward. I still view him as a low end wide receiver one, high end wide receiver two. And if your other league mates willing to sell him for Mike Evans, go send Mike Evans for him. Now, our next wide receiver, someone that I also have no concerns with at all, will be Chris Olave. Chris Olave, you need to send aggressive trades for right now. This past week, it was nasty. Chris Olave had one reception in comparison to Alvin Kamara at 13. I understand Alvin Kamara absolutely dominated targets here. Derek Carr wasn't fully healthy. Derek Carr dealing with the shoulder. And if you are looking at what we have going forward, I think that the Saints had to learn the hard way. You have two options. One, we play Derek Carr when he's fully healthy. Or two, if he's not healthy, you play Jameis Winston. I think that Winston coming in would be looking a little bit further downfield than Derek Carr had to do just check down City with a bum shoulder. And if Derek Carr gets fully healthy and we are able to see him have that usual passing volume, I mean, weeks... One through three, you had Chris Olave 10 targets, 11 targets, 11 targets. I mean, you had him with over 300 receiving yards through the first three weeks. Chris Olave is a stud wide receiver. Don't overreact based off the Alvin Kamara target share, based off the Chris Olave just bum game. It was because of Derek Carr's bum shoulder. Obviously, we're going to be monitoring Derek Carr going forward, but I'm still going to rank Chris Olave as a mid to low end wide receiver one, probably low end wide receiver one in fantasy. But if you could go send Chris Godwin and Cortland Sutton to go get someone like Chris Olave, go do that right now. 
But I think that's all we have for this video. Of course, if you have not done so already, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you play fantasy football. And of course, if you want to check out any of those pickums over on Underdog Fantasy, my favorite will be Nico Collins for more than 58 and a half receiving yards. You can find that link in the comment section. You can find it in the description. Promo code FLOCK. You're going to get a 100% deposit match up to $500. Plus, you're going to be getting our updated rest of season fantasy football rankings and tiers. If you're new to Underdog, you're going to be getting a Justin Fields special pickup more than less than half a total yard going up against Washington on Thursday. And also, I hooked y'all up with a Flock exclusive pickup for next week. Justin Herbert more than less than half a passing yard. So make sure you're taking advantage of that. Only going to get both with promo code Flock. But thank you again. Really do appreciate you. Really hope you have a great day. And really hope we get to see you out with the live stream later tonight.